Hello everyone and welcome to the Benny Go Bay Castle Bay League Grand Final. Here in Golgon, Billy Dunn in Golgon between the Golgon Kuros and the Gilgander Panthers. Ben Harris in the country, box of view with Billy Barnes as the players make their way onto the field. Golgon Terriers taking on the Gilgander Panthers. For the Golgon Terriers side, fullback is Brad James. Wingers, James Morrison and Brendan Carter. In the centres, we've got Cole Alexander and Sam Rawlinson. The halves pairing is 580's Andy Stott. Halfback is Matthew Stott. The prop forwards are Nick Harvey and Nathan Martin. Hooker is Mitch, Mitch Squire. Second row is Luke O'Connell and Kurt Gudgeon. And captain coach, James Carter, is Rock. On the reserve bench, we've got Dave Morrison. Number 15, we've got Shane Dermott. It's number 16 is Carl Webley, 17 is James Cliff, number 18 is Joel Worsley, and number 19 is Blake Glory. For the, Gil for the Gilganger Panthers, fullback is Curtis Carr, wing is Rory Milgate and Harry Irvin. Centres are Chris Fuller and Ray, 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 Ray Buchanan. 5'8 is Brandon Hammond. Halfback is Luke Ritchie. Prop forwards are Daniel Pracy and Anthony Kelly. Hooker is Jamie Towney. Second row is King, Kieran Hazelton and, cap and number 12 is Captain Adam Hazelton. And the lock forward is AJ Young. The bench for the Panthers is Nathan Walker, number 14. Number 15 is Josh Nixon. Number 16 Simon Cass. Number 17, Jay Towney. Number 18, Matt Frackington. And number 19 is Nick Weir. As I join in the comment box with Billy Barnes. Willie, mate, welcome to uh, the Bendigo Bank Hustle Ray League Grand Final, mate. What do you think is going to happen today? Oh, mate, um, first up, it's a great scene. The Ovals are going to be a picture with a huge crowd in as we kick off. Well, I think we're going to be a bit of a tough struggle out there today. We'll have to sort of see how they go. As referee Mick Dries gets us on the way, and Golgan are, are on the attack, and I mean, a crunching tackle there. It's Nick Harvey with the ball. And his big Carl Webley runs up, the former Western Rams player, in his first season for the Terriers. He's had a fantastic season so far. Here's the captain coach, James Carter, and they have another barnstorming run. They're up on the 35 metre line. And there's Brad James. He's, he's the elusive Brad, Brad James, a prolific point, uh, point scorer. Uh, James has been this, this season. Scorer remarkable, 31 tries this season. Eight of those tries came against Changi back in round 15. And look at Matthew Stoff. Matthew Stoff kicks it down to the field. A big kick and taken on the full by, by Curtis Carr. He runs back and he gets meets by some big defence by the Golden Terriers on the 25 metre line. It's good first, good first set of six. Uh, really, what do you think of Nick with the Terriers' first set of six? Well, I made it this stage. Uh, good kick, and good chase down town. They've, um, they've gone up in some strong defence. Uh, pushing the Panthers back a little, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. These Panthers, they're on their 35 metre line. And there's our first, and there's our first penalty. Plays holding down, Mick drives all over it. And Jamie Town, he's telling his players, just, just take it in. And nearly two minutes gone, and still nil all between the Golden Terriers and the Gilgander Panthers. Here at a beautiful, sunny Billy Dunn over in the Golden. This is the first time Golgong have uh, hosted a Castle Ray League Grand Final. In fact, it's their first time in the Castle Ray League Grand Final since coming from the competition from the Midwest Cup, or the new Eric Cup as it's now known, in 2009. Hammond passes it off, and this is number 10, Anthony Kelly. He's a strong, he's a strong runner. The Golden will have to uh, be careful with him, he's very strong. And there's our number nine, Townie. Back to Kelly, he's looking for, he's made it, made it 15 metres there. Terry is just, just not moving up. Gilgander on the attack now, they're 12 metres out. Richie puts a little grubber through, but great clean up there by James Morrison. And Morrison gets cleaned up by two Panthers attackers. Great option there by Luke Richie making the kick, so and Terry is under pressure already. What do you make of Gilgander's first set of six there, Willie? Uh, Beautiful sunny day. There was a bit of cloud cover earlier this morning. By now, Billy Dunnoval is bathed in the sunshine as Matt Stock gets the restart underway. And big Anthony Kelly takes it up. He's been met by James Carter, the captain coach of the Terriers. 
Panthers are 35 metres out on the Terriers line. Number 11, Kieran Hamilton. Hammond. And Daniel Crazy. Big boy Daniel Crazy. Hammond trying to find a gap there, but he can't get through. Green brought down. He's that by Andy Stott. Number six, there are the stop boys from made their, made their mark in much for the Dragons. Had a stint over at Dublin Macquarie in Group 11, came back for the Dragons, and now they're in their first season with the Terriers. This is Townie, kicks it through again, and picked up by Andy Stott on the 10 metre line. That would have, that would have hurt Gold Gong a little bit if they, if they had to do another goal line drop out. Great James running across the field. He's baited two offenders. He gets tackled there by Hammond, who meets him on the other side. This is, this is Harvey, one of the young guns for the Terriers. He's he's had a breakout season. The last few seasons had a few has had a breakout. The last few seasons. And that's Andy Stott trying to get the kick away, but. Got charged down. It's been six, six to go again. Referee Mick Dries, single six to go, and that's Golgon on the attack. That's Luke O'Connell. Big car, big car, Webley. This is why Webley's so strong. Easy made, 15 meters, still going. Webley is taking three Panthers players to take him down. Webley has, as I said, making his first season playing for Golgon. He's enjoying it. And a great ball there by Matt Stock with a great call. And it's given to Luke O'Connor off the fifth. There's a try. Terry's have scored. First try in the fifth minute. Beautiful try there. Matthew Stock. That was on the back of a great run from Carl Welling. Matthew Stock. Uh, Looks for the ball. Kurt Gudgeon, number 11. Kurt Gudgeon scored the try. But Terriers get the first points, and how important really is that to get the for the home side to get the first points on the board on Grand Final Day? Well, mate, I think that will now settle the nerves. It, it come from a, a, a bit of luck, I suppose. Uh, the Andrew put a good chase on the kicker Matty Scott over there, but he got the ball back. They had six to go, and a beautiful no look pass put the hit the third away for the try. Yes, Matty Scott showing showing a bit of class, a bit of class there. Kirk Gudgeon must say he ran a beautiful hole. And the Gilbert Panthers, the defence just wasn't there, and Gudgeon, you're not going to stop him out from that short distance out here. He's just going to barge and fly over. The terror is in the fifth minute. Joe Gudgeon gets the first points for the Golden Terrors in the lead 4 0. That's Matt Scott. He lines up for the, lines up for the kick. And they've got, we're looking at the. Bit of uh, the goalposts are a bit on the angle here, but Matt Stott doesn't mind it. It's coming around. No, he's way from the, on the right hand side of the over. Oh, he would have, in fact, you're right, Willie, if those posts were straight, he probably would have had a goal. But nevertheless, Golgong lead 4 0 here in the Bendigo Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final Day for 2015. There's a big crowd here. At least, at least 2,000 people here in back, packing out Billy Dunn Oval. The whole town of Golgong has been very excited, been looking forward to this uh, grand final day ever since the Terriers won against Canelo as Nick Harvey makes a barnstorming run and he's meet up by Hazleton and AJ Young. It's a big hit as well. So now, maybe that try, Panthers leaking that try has probably spurred him to action a little bit. As they're now getting up in the face of the Terriers' attack. Stott and dummy half give it out to Weverly. Weverly proving hard that that's another big run by Rev 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 Weverly. Brad James at hacking half. He comes easy runs. You can't give it can't give a player like James easy room because he'll make you pay. As I said, he has scored 31 tries, and unfortunately, there as I've just the commentator's curse says, Willie, I've given him a bit of a rap, and unfortunately, he's. He's lost the ball in the tackle. Bit of a left off there, bit of a let off there by for Gil Gandra. As we pack down 
the scrum. And said referee Mick Dries is the referee, our touch judges today. Uh, Wayne Burgess and Brad Size. Earlier we've had this is our third game for today. Earlier we had the uh, under the winners of the under 17s Barlin Darling Cup take on the winners of the under 17s Route 14. Uh, the winners of the Barlin Darling Cup were Burke Warriors and they took on the Cunnebaron uh, Unicorns and the Warriors won that 32 points to 24. Then we had a fantastic league day, a league tag match between Cunnamble Bears and the Trangy Magpies, which was decided in extra uh, time, golden point extra time, which is a Tory Tory Cannon sliding home a 30 metre field goal to win for the Cunnamble Bears for the league, for the inaugural winners of the league tag, winning 19 points to 18. As Gilchan, he's a bit of a hot potato passing there, but from Towney. He gives it out. And as is Richie looking for another kick. Richie, he's been met there by O'Connell. And now Gilgandra are on the pressure here. They're trying to get the ball away. And eventually they do kick it away through Brandon Hammond. He's just had to reef it down the field. Panthers were probably not expecting Terriers to get up there. And oh, James Morrison has just spilled the ball. So a few nerves happening for the Terriers. After so much good work by the Terriers doing some pressure. James, the kick there by under pressure by Brandon Hammond. And unfortunately, James Morrison just... He's probably had a look at the fence. Uh, Why are Willie coming coming down? And unfortunately, he's just spilt the ball. Prime position for the Panthers. Yeah, mate. Um, I've got to say, too, off the back of uh, the Terriers, their last set went 65 metres. Gilgandra there only went about 30 off their set. So they got very lucky there. But this is what the day's about in grand finals. Different things happen. As we get our way, this is Hammond. He gives it out to Carr. He puts that inside. That's number, that's number 17, Jay Towney. He gets out there, just 10 metres out right in front of the sticks. Here's Richie. He puts it through. Richie's got a, he's held up over the line, is he? He's just short. Just short. He's about a metre out. Dry, referee drives was right on the spot. This is Jamie Towney. Doesn't go for a half. Poor ball. Gives out the Hammond. This is Carr. Another cut out ball to, to Kieran Hazelton. Hazelton puts a flow. Might have gone forward and has. It has. Touch judge size on the fast on the fast side. Pick the ball with the ball forward. It's probably propelled, uh, knocked on as well. The Panthers. So Terriers have got a let off. So a couple of uh, nerves, which is expected for a big for a big day grand final. Um, but some of the players might just have to uh, calm down a little bit as we've got into we just the clock just ticks over to the eleventh minute. Terriers lead four points to nil here at the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final here at Billy Dunn Oval. Ben Harris and Willie Barnes with you in commentary. As Mitch Squire cuts the ball, and gives it out to the captain coach. And that's Carter, who offloads to Weverly, and Weverly met with three defenders. I think Gil Granger finally figured out they need as many players on, on Weverly as, as possible. This is Gudgeon. Carter, another strong run. Big strong run there by Carter. They've made it, made it probably at least 10 metres there. Looking for the fifth tackle. Squire to Stott. He goes to the air. How's Carr going to handle this? He's under it. He's got it straight, straight down his throat. And he's been met by James. His opposite number. Good tackle there by James and Carter. Good crowds, good crowd in. They're still coming through the gates. And so we had a later kickoff than usual, courtesy of the, of the league tag uh, grand final going into Golden Point extra time, which was won by Canamble, 19 points to 18. But in the main game here, we've got Golden Terriers leading four points to nil. As Jamie Towney gets a big run, he gives it up to Kieran Hazelton. He offloads back to Towney. And AJ Young is, well, I'm not sure if Young was expecting that ball, but he got, got it anyway. And he spilt it. So a couple, as I said, a few more errors. That's probably the Gilgranger's third error. Golgong's made a couple of errors. So neither side getting over the early nerves. As we get in, coming up to the 14th minute mark. Golgong going to have the ball. Yeah, approximately 35 metres out from their line. Referee. Just calls times off. Yeah, 
This might be a bit of a interchange coming on. That's number 19 coming on. Nick Weir for Phil Gil Gilganja coming on. And Matt Stott has to get that ball on the ankles. And it's Brendan Carter again. Brendan Carter looks a bit different with that with that beard and a bit of long hair. He's he's a, he's a, when he gets room, Brendan Carter. He's very very quick. This is Weverly again. Three three Panthers players taking Weverly down. This is Stott looking for that short ball for Gudgeon again, but he decided to go back inside and he gets tackled. They're in 45 metres out from the Gilgangers line. James looking with the left hand step. Does he get through from Richie? He does, but he gets met, but he gets run up tackled again by Rory Milgate and Chris Fuller. The, the centre and the winger pairing working together to track down James. Is Nick Young? Nick Harvey coming through again, broken the line. What can Terriers do? They're coming on the left-hand side. Look for Stott. Stott's gone through himself. They're on the fight. Give it out to Carter. Oh, great tackle there. Is that Curtis Carr? Number, number 10, in fact. It was number 10, Anthony Kelly. Beautiful tackle from Anthony Kelly. Terriers. They're looking a bit, looking a bit uh, dangerous with, with, that, with that ball, especially on that left fringe, um, Willie, aren't they? Oh, definitely, mate. It seems to be their pet side, but... Uh the tackle there by the prop was a ball and all that had to be made, otherwise it's try time. Mate, the thing I've noticed is so far the um, the Terriers are up off the line and in Gilgandra's face in defence, and there's another good shot, whereas uh, Gilgandra seem to be waiting a little bit. There's more metres gained by the Terriers. And a big crunching tackle there by Nathan Martin and also his captain coach, James Carter. As Gilgandra trying to look, trying to get themselves out of their, out of their own half. That's, this is Kieran Helton playing it. He gives the Curtis Carr a long ball. And another mistake. Another mistake from Gil Ganger. I'll tell you what, Coach Brian Irvin would not be happy with this uh, amount of mistakes that Gil Ganger are uh, doing, especially in their own half, doing pushing those passes. He probably, Curtis Carr probably had the right idea, but I don't think his winger was expecting the long ball. And now, Golgong, prime position, just in between the 30 metre and the 40 metre line on Gil in Gil Gilgantra's half. This is Harvey gets met. And there's a setting up for the come on the left hand side. This is Weverly. He braces one sloppy defender, two sloppy defenders. And he said, you, they've got to do more, they've got to do better than that. And he draws a penalty as well. Offside. So, Golgan go for the quick tap here. He gives it to Gudgeon. Gudgeon looking for his second. Can he get over the ball? He's over the line. No, just short. Pulled back. And here it is. Now they're going to be sending. Golgan are going to send the big proppers. This is Graham. He's over the line. No, it's just desperate defence by the Panthers. Two metres out. Terriers lead. Four points to nil in the Bendigo Bank Castle League Grand Final. Stott to his brother Andy. Andy puts it inside to Luke O'Connell. He pushes away. He's coming through. But come back on the left hand side. This and oh, lost a ball. Well, just when you thought the Terriers were having the momentum, they did have. They were looking. At, they were going to score. Had a couple of near misses. Great desperate defence by the Panthers. But unfortunately, Luke O'Connell in that in that little run has dropped the ball, and Panthers once again have been let off the hook. Is Kieran Helterton runs it up on the 15 metre line. And he said, the crowds, the crowds not so much vocal t at the moment. They're just they're a bit of, I think they sense a bit of tension as well. Maybe they might be nervous. Who knows? It's Grand Final day. Anything happens on Grand Final day. Everyone gets nervous. And it's a good run there by the Panthers. By their, by their actually Helterton, and he's drawn the penalty. The captain has drawn the penalty, and Jamie Towning gives him the pat on the head to say, "Well done, Skip. This is what we needed." And now Golgan have just given Gilgancha a piggyback down the down the field as Richie kicks it into the touch. And now they're 25 meters. They're 25 meters out from the Terriers line. Now can Panthers do something with this? They've been down here a couple of times, but they haven't come out with the chocolates. They've been making a few errors. This is Townie's quick play of the ball there. 
Give it to the number three. That's Chris Fuller wearing the purple boots and a lovely haircut as well, I must say. Townie gives out the Richie. Richie the Hammond. And Big Kelly running the decoy. This is Curtis Carr. He steps back inside. Goes back to his forward. Can he get there? Curtis Carr is over. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold the phone. It's a penalty. There's obstruction. Mick drives the referee in perfect position, I must say, Willie. In perfect position. Curtis Carr. He's come back inside. And unfortunately... Some lazy, some lazy uh, Panthers teammates. He's run behind them, and unfortunately, the try has been disallowed. What do you think that will happen now with Panthers? Will that spring them in the action, uh, uh, really, or not? Will that have the opposite effect? Do you think? Well, mate, at this stage, we're 19 minutes gone. I think it, it's going to come down to whichever side settles first. Both sides are still throwing the ball around. The, the set before the penalty for the Panthers. They seem to be wanting to go wide and, and long balls before they did the hard yards up the middle. I think they need to settle and get to the game plan. There's another error. Yes. Another error. I'm not sure if the, the ball's got soap on it, but it's uh, both teams having trouble um, holding on to the ball. And said, how these two teams got to the grand final? Well, Golgong, this is in fact Golgong's second game in five weeks, having the bye in the last round, then they had the had the week off in the first week of the finals, and then they defeated Canamble in the major semi-final. And Gil Granger had to come through the, the hard way. They had to play the minor semi-final against uh, Coonabarabran. Then they had to travel to Canamble, which is no easy feat, and defeat the Bears there. And this is how we get a Panthers Terriers grand final. As ooh, a little bit of a juggle there by Fuller. And it's unfortunately a little bit of a juggle. And it's a rake and it's a penalty. Good call there by Willie Barnes. He was in, he was in there. He saw it there. And draw and drives. He saw the rake. Probably got help with his with his uh, touch judge as well from Wayne Burgess. Great to see the referees working together. I must say they've had 20 minutes gone and the referees are having a fantastic game. And this is full up. He's waiting for the ball. Gives out the Richie. And it's the big 19. This is where. And give it out to the captain. That's Adam Hazelton, the captain for the game. And there's another penalty. All right, and Hazelton gets up and doesn't really didn't take too fancy to the uh, to the high shot, which is rightly so. You can't you can't smack a bloke around the head. And Matt's Matt Stott, unfortunately. Even though he's a pint-sized player, he does he got up a bit high there. And now Gil Ganger. This is probably their this is probably their best opportunity now. Again. They go through the hands. It's Hammond. Gives out the car. He's looking through at the number eleven. That's Hazelton against Kieran Hazelton again. And gets on on the eastern on the eastern sideline. And this is Kelly. Anthony Kelly there. Terriers are moving, they're moving up. Big defence. The Terriers defence has been great all season. That's a strong tackle there. That's Gudgeon. Gudgeon and Weverly. In the marker. Gives it out to Carr. Looks on the inside ball. He goes to the side to go himself. Panthers have to get on the ball. Look at it. And unfortunately, another. Another pass that's been pushed. If they, if the, if, and that was Jay, that was Jay Town here who dropped the ball, unfortunately. And if, if I think if he got, if he got that, he might have sneaked into the corner. But nonetheless, Gilgander have blown another possible try. Probably the fourth or fifth time that it's happened. It's been of a. An arm wrestle at the moment has said both sides have been riddled with errors, which has kind of stop started the momentum of the match. As Mitch and that squire looking for, for a quick run. No, it's not. As Brad James. That was Kyle Alexander, Kyle Alexander who played the ball previously. And James gets tackled there. And James could be hurt. He doesn't look well. He's stayed down. And Drys takes takes time off. Geez, Terriers would not be hoping, uh, would not be wanting uh, Brad James to come off. He's been 
their prolific point scorer this this year. As as I said, he scored 31 tries this this year already. Eight of them were against Trangy, and he's kicked 61 kicked 61 goals as well for a total points of 246. Quite incredible. But he might taking this. So Willie, what what would Gilgandra have to do? They've been down in the in their in Golgon's twenty quite a few times. They've had about four or five opportunities to put points on the ball, on the board, I should say. But they've come around with errors. What can Gil? What do Gil, Gilgandra have to do? I think I think, mate, when they get down there, at times they're going wide too early. They need to get the big boys to settle it up the middle. Uh, at this stage, um, I'm I'm looking at Curtis Carr, the fullback. He looks most likely. And what they need to do is put the big boys up front first, two or three, and then give him some room with a quick play of the ball, and maybe that will be the difference. Well, Curtis Carr did get over the line, but unfortunately um, he was he was, he was penalised for, for a shepherd for obstruction as James Morrison. And uh, speaking... No. Oh. Oh. Took him out, late hit. I think, it was, I think that's going back on the late hit on Matt Stott, in fact. He passed the ball, and I'm not sure who the Panthers player that was, but... Stott was taking now was definitely late, but I think Golgan were fortunate that um, James Morrison wasn't penalised for his for his, doing his own shepherd as well. Now Terriers are now inside the Panthers half, 40 metres out. This is Gudgeon running hard, makes it to the 30 metre line. The Terriers will be looking for Gudgeon and now Weverly. This other they have a big bopper. Terry is at 20 metres out. 4 0. Golgong Lee Gilganja here in the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray Lee Grand Final. And unfortunately, that was Andy Stott who's dropped the ball. I'm not, I'm not entirely too sure how many errors have been in this game, but we could be close to double digits. I think both sides have, have had five each. If not, that's very close. That's the number 16, Simon Cass, a former CSU Mungos boy. Playing for his hometown, Gilgandra. And this is Hazleton looking, looking the offload. Decides to hold it. He takes a tackle. Hammond. That's Kieran Hazleton. Drops the, passes the ball over the J-Towny. And he gets tackled there. Harry Irvin at dummy half. He takes a little run. No markers. They like give it out. That's a big... Pricey. No, I'm sorry, that's AJ Young, my apologies. And Hammond's kick has gone, it's just gone up really, hasn't gone anywhere distance-wise. It went up and it went straight back down. Gilganda tried to pat it back, but unfortunately they pat it back straight into the arms of a Golgong Terrier. And Morrison. And, and there's a penalty. It is, and Brendan Carter... Gets the penalty, Gil Kanja, all over the play of the ball. As Nick Harvey and Carl Weverly have just come off, both had they both had, had great starts to the game. Blake Gorry, the young 20-year-old, he's coming on in replace of Carl Weverly, and that's a very, very, very good kick, very deep kick by Matt Stott as well. As they're on the attack, Andy Stott gives it out to Gudgeon, and he's looking hard. He could be hard to stop. He might be sniffing a second try today. They're going on the short side. Here comes the number three. That's Alexander. And a big tackle there. And he gets up. That was, I think that was Hammond who did the tackle. And he said, come on, mate, let's have another go. This is Martin. He runs back inside. Golgong, will they be spreading out wide? Stott is calling on the outside. He gets it. He's looking. He's coming to the shimmy. Give it out to Squire. He gets trapped. As Andy Stott goes in the dummy half, will they keep them going on the right hand side? And they're looking for numbers. And come back to the left. James. That could be knocked back down. It could be six to go. Gilgandra recovered. Nope. Golgon, I've got it. Play on. Play on the referee. Count re and it's back to zero. So count restart. Six more tackles of the Terriers. 4 0 in the Bing and the Obank Castle Ray League Grand Final here at Billy Dunn over in Golgong. Terriers leading the Panthers. This is Stott, Andy Stott. Gives out the number eight and Nick Harvey. Easy as you like. Runs through the hole. He just barges his way over and straight under the sticks he says, thank you very much. Terriers lead eight points to nil with a kick to come. 
Nick Harvey made it. He made it look very easy, Willie. What do you think, Panthers? Obviously, that back, oh, the six again. Obviously, hurt them. They're tied on their feet. How do you reckon Panthers can regroup now? Now they've now ten points. Soon to be ten points down. Uh, mate, at this stage, the body language doesn't look really great. But if we go back a little bit, we go back to the errors in the game. We spoke about those so far. Both sides are doing it. I think, I think Gilgander are more so than. Um, than the Terriers. It comes back to the kick on the fifth that went more or less straight up and down, barely contested the ball. Um, goal gone, get it, then the, the piggyback penalty, the great kick for touch. We get the touch in flight, six to go, and mate, he just stepped through some pretty feeble defence in the finish. Yes, the, the errors are mounting up for both sides, but for Panthers as well, as I said, they've had opportunity inside the Terriers' own 20 metres to, to put some points on. But unfortunately, it just areas of um, errors. Sorry, have just hampered their attack as Matt Stott makes the extras. So with with 11 minutes to go in the first half, Golden Terriers lead Gilganja Panthers 10 points to nil in the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final. The Terriers playing on their home. Billy Dunoval, first time they're in the grand final, in the Castlereagh League grand final, since entering the competition in 2009. Gil Granger have won three premierships, 2001, 2011 and 2013. And Nick Harvey, the try scorer, runs hard, but he's been met some by solid defence. And now it's Kieran Hazleton meeting up. And now a strong tackle. And... James Townley, the number 16 for the for the Panthers. Simon Cass comes in and over the top. And a great tackle there by Matt Fre Frecklington as well. Has driven the Terriers back. As Morrison plays the ball, this is Carter. Runs in guard. He's been having a good game so far. Running hard. Stott in dummy half. Gives out the gudgeon. He's looking, he's making, he's making ground every single time he's he's running. And he's and unfortunately. As Gudgeon has knocked the ball on in the tackle. And again, another error for this time from the Terriers. Yes, this is Pan Panthers have won three uh, Castle Ray League grand finals. They won in 2001, 2011, and the most recent in 2013. Bit of a pattern, 2011, 2013. They'll be hoping for 2015 to make it number four. But they need to uh, reduce their errors and they need to get down to the Terrier's own line. And this is going to help. This is going to help by getting to the Terrier's own line. Again, Golgong uh, being a bit guilty in, in the penalty count. And especially in the grand, grand final, you cannot afford to give the opposition easy territory through penalties. As Hammond just drills the board out. This is Hammond now. He's given it. Bit, this is Adam Hauser and a big tackle there. Great solid tackle. That's from Gudgeon. Gudgeon giving him, giving Hauser, giving up a bit of a height advantage, disadvantage, I should say. This is Carr looking. He's straight through and he's over. Carr. Try time. Willie Barnes mentioned that Curtis Carr was the danger man for the Panthers. And guess what? Carr, out of something out of nothing, really has scored, and now Panthers, with nine minutes to go, have hit back. It's ten points to four, kick to come. It's a beautiful try there by Curtis Carr. It was on the back of, really, it was on the back of that penalty from Golgong, and two or three tackles later, Gilganja find themselves over the trial line. Yeah, mate, uh, this time around it went the other way. Golgong lost the ball on the, or coming up to the last tackle. Again, um, you know, these are coach killers, mate. Um, they don't get their kick away. They don't complete the set. Then the piggyback penalty and, and Panthers have made them pay. Yeah, it's a great try. I said Carr has been, he's been their danger man so far for the Panthers. He was, he crossed over for an earlier try, early in, early in the game, but unfortunately that try was disallowed. But he got this one. This one's not to be denied. As Richie lines up on the sideline, is not coming around. He goes to the right of the uh, right hand upright. Unfortunately, 
for the Panthers. Could not convert the, the extra two. With uh, seven and a half minutes to go, it's Golgong 10, Gilganja 4. As Matt Stott looks to restart for the Terriers. That's Kieran Hazelton. Runs the ball up. Gets tackled. And another sloppy defence there. Morrison's probably lucky not to give away a penalty there for doing a second attempt. But we play on. The Kilgandra fans calling for the referee to award a penalty. They, some feel they might have held on too long in the tackle. Is this Hammond? Puts the inside ball. Back to that number 14. That's Nathan Walker. As Richie boots it downtown. But down there is all oh, a collision between James, between Brad James and James Morrison. No communication. But fortunately for the Terriers, James has got it. Now he's run across the field and he's away. Well, I think he's run about 20 metres across the field and he's been taken out. And that is un well. Quite, quite unbelievable. There was non, no communication between James and, ja and his winger, James Morrison, as well. But unfortunately, Brad James, the fullback for the Terriers, grabs the ball and he's run across field, but he's run too far across field. And in winning his tackle, he's been taken out. So now Gil Ganja. And wouldn't this, really, wouldn't this uh, inject a big boost into Gil Ganja if they can score right before half time? Oh, mate, it, it'll be a massive boost. Uh, again, we come down to the errors where. Um where the fullback's got the ball and, and probably should have just taken it up and taken the hit, but he's gone wide, he's gone into touch again. It's an error. The tide's turned here, though. Now it's the Terriers making all the errors. Panthers will be looking to capitalise on those errors. This is Richie. He's got Simon Cass on the outside. He gives it to him, and Cass takes another and gets lifted, but gets put back down. And it's a strong, strong tackle, and he's a knocked on. It's a bad play of the ball by Cass. That was James. James Cliff was the was the tackler. He's kind of picked him up and then gently put him back down. But in in the midst of of finishing the tackle, Cass has has lost the ball. So Golgong have been let off the hook there. And Gilganja, once again, inside Golgong's uh, territory, in, inside Golgong's half, I should say, have lost the ball. As Harvey. Uh, it's a big hit, a big shot there. And look at it. Nick Harvey makes a big run. And Carl Webley, Carl Webley comes on. He's come on for Dave Morrison. He's good. In fact, no, it's Dave Morrison. So Webley's, in fact, Webley's come on for Joel Worsley, sorry. Number 18. And Stott, he's gone a big high, and he's going long. Is this car? He takes it cleanly. He's, he can't give much. And we've already oh. seen before, and they've dropped the ball. Backwards. Gone backwards, and he's been cleaned up. I think that's Roy Milgate over there. Panthers now a bit under pressure. They're trying to get out of the their own 20 meter line Terry is now as, as, as Willie mentioned the momentum had shifted quite a little while ago from Golgong to Panthers but I feel now the momentum has shifted again this time back to the Terriers as Stott and Alexander tackle Matt Frecklington and they've dropped the ball on and it's been picked up regathered by James Cliff oh knock on both ways so we're going, to have a, we're going to have a scrum. With three minutes to go, it is 10 points to four. Now, Terriers will be searching for their third try of the half. And if they can get it just before the half time, they will definitely go into the, through the break with their heads up. And they would obviously, you would have to say, coming out of the second half, you would say they'll be the favourites. Is Andy Stott. Now 
I was Rawlinson playing it. And he was scooting up. That's Squire. I said, Mitch Squire last year played for the Dunedoo Swans in the 2014 Grand Final. The Swans ending a 48-year premiership drought. Unfortunately, this year, and we've seen a lost ball here. And we have. We have. Nick Harvey in the tackle has lost a ball. Yes, unfortunately, the uh, defending premiers, the Swans, um, could not field a team this year. Same with the Warren Bulldogs. But nonetheless, it's been a very, very tough season. It's been a very good season for the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League competition. And we've got the, well, the two best sides at, at the moment in the grand, in, in the playing off the grand final. Ben Harris and Willie Barnes in commentary with you. With two minutes to go, Golden and Kerry his lead. The Gilganja Panthers, 10 points to four. That's Adam Hazelton plays the ball. And this is this is Buchanan, Ray Buchanan. He's been a bit been a bit quiet. Jake Towney, he's also he's he could be a, he could be a match breaker just like just like Curtis Carr. Look out for look out for Jamie Towney later on in the game. He will be going for dummy half quite often. This is Richie back to Carr. Gives it out to Kieran Hazelton. Hazelton not tackled. Eventually he's been brought down by two defenders, Nathan Morrison and also Andy Stott. A big fella on a small fellow. Car that's Hammond kicks it through. It could be deep. Is it going deep? Well, James has got to play at it. It's gone too deep. So he got back to the 20-meter line and now with, with the rule, Gil Golgong will have seven, op seven tackles to get down to the other end with less than a minute left on the clock. He gives it up to James Carter. It was a pretty... That was a I was going to say a matter of a wasted tackle, but not. That's their f that's their first tackle there. The Terriers. Oh, look, we've got a minute. We've got a minute to go. This is Weverly. The Terriers not running on the ball as hard as they did at the start of the half. Obviously, tired legs coming in. And Stott, as he, he makes a clean breakthrough dummy half, and he's just picked up at least 15 meters, 15 vital me meters. This is his older brother, Matt. He's done a step. He's been knocked down. Is that six to go again? Play on. Dry says play on. He's six to go. So they get another another opportunity. We're in. We're less than 30 seconds to go in the first half. This is Brad James trying to get through. Willie, what do you think the Terriers might do? You reckon a field goal might be an opportunity? No. No, not at this stage. I think they've got the running. They should run with it. I think they'll get one here. Here it comes. And we're coming to the last. There's the Hooter. They're looking at the screaming of the ball for the ball outside. Unfortunately, that's it was James that has been tackled. And that's the first half here at Billy Dunn Oval in the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final for 2015. At half time, it's the home side. Golong Terry is 10, Gilganja Panthers 4. We'll be back in a few moments for the second half. Welcome back to, for the second half of the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final 2015. Golong Terriers leading Gilganja Panthers 10 points to four at a sunny Billy Dunn Oval. Ben Harris and Willie and Willie Barnes in commentary with you. Willie, just well, before we wait till we get the kickoff for the second half, if you're a coach of both sides, what would you say to your players uh, in, in the sheds at half time? The first thing I'll be saying is you're paying paying for the hair transplant because I've got none left. Mate, it, it really does come down to whoever holds the ball in this half, I think, because uh, early on in, in the game where the Terriers had the possession, I was thinking, well, Gilgandra will tire in the second half, but then the tide turned and, and the Terriers started putting it on the ground. So it's sort of 50-50 at this stage. I think whoever holds the ball will win this. As Matt Stock gets us underway, and that's a big run by the Pan by Panthers. I think that's trying to find the number who that's Adam Hales turn that's right so obviously the, the captain leading by example as Anthony Kelly gets wrapped up by Sam Rawlinson from Golgan and Kieran looking Kieran Hazelton trying to get up as Towney give that to Hammond Hammond's drills are down there and the beautiful side and it's inside for a looking for a 40-20 and Brad James bit of a burst of speed obviously Hammond Terry's a bit caught out there with the early kick from Hammond. Brendan Carter wasn't on his wing, and Brad James had to do an extra work. This is Brendan Carter now, making a run from dummy half. 
We've seen the Panthers' early attention, big hard running. And, and Terry is now that he get more running as well. They're looking forward. This is Squire. He's, he's made an easy room there. He's made a good 12 metres from, from, from the dummy half run. The, the marker is a bit sloppy, a bit sloppy and a bit slow. And Mitch Squire using his burst of speed to get through the gap. There's the fifth tackle now. Matt Stott, he goes straight to the air, goes high. Curtis Carr, who's been safe underneath the high ball all game, does it again. He's looking for it, trying to find some room. My Gudgeon meets him up and he gets tackled by Weverly as well. Panthers trying to take it out of their own 20 metre line. They're 25 metres out. The second, the second tackle. Crowd, crowd asking Mick Dries to keep him on side. I must say, the referee is doing a fantastic job. 10 points to four. Second minute in the second half in the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final for 2015. Golgong Terriers against the Gilganja Panthers here at Billy Dunn Oval. Here's Townie. Gives out the Richie. He dabs the kick down to the, the end of the field. It's got a bit of a roll on. It's going to hold up, is it? It does, and Brad James will have to work it out from his own in goal, which he does. And he's met by a couple of the Gil Grander Panthers. One of them was Kieran Halderton, and the other one down there was Josh Nixon, the number 15. Well, it's, looking, uh, it's looking like the Gil Grander coaches worked this out with a bit of a breeze. So far, the first two sets have kicked early and put the ball deep. I think he's... He's thinking it's better that than lose the thing. Here we go. And Miss Squire makes a great run. Great support there by Nick Harvey. He's, he's barged off one. He's got oh. Rawlison in this support. Rawlison looking for a stop. He gets brought down by number five. That's Harry Irvin. Terry is on the attack. Oh. The quick crow ball. Morrison. He's a size guy himself. He gets brought down. He's the over. He's over. Morrison. Just like that, the Terriers go from one end to the other end of the field. And they're now leading 14 points to four. Kick to come. That try, all set up, you can put that down. The, Mick, the Mitch Squire making that run. Nick Harvey in support. And a quick play of the ball from, from Nick Harvey to give it to James Morrison. He's used his, used his height and his strength. And he's dragged a couple of the Panthers defenders over with him. And then now the Terriers lead 14 points to four. What do you make of that try, Willie Barn? Well, mate, I thought the defence was there. However, Mitch Squire showed a great turn of pace and a bit of strength to push one away and up the middle. And a beautiful offload, a nice little ball to the inside. And then that quick play of the ball, I think, mate, was the killer. Terriers, like they did in the first half. They scored the first points. They've done exactly the same thing in the second half. 14-4, Matt Stott lining up the conversion. This must have brought a big smile to James Carter's, uh, the captain coach for the Terriers' face. That's the start that he wanted. As really make a mention... Panthers do have the breeze behind their back, so they were kicking deep. Unfortunately, Mitch, unfortunately for the Panthers, Mitch Squire found the Panthers' markers napping, and he makes a break. Nick Harvey, great support, and in that quick play of the ball, gives it to James Morrison, who went for himself, and he scores. As Stott now, looking for the line and up. He's got it, and he's added the two. He does. Four and a half minutes gone in the second half. The Golden Terriers lead Gilganja Panthers 16 points to four in the 2015 Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final. The Panthers now, they would have, they would have thought what's happened there would, would have been really shocked was how quick the Terriers went from their own end of the field. And, that's, and just like that, that ball has gone, the kickoff has gone out on the full. Really, you caught, you're talking about coach killers, and that's probably the number one in the, in, the, in, the, in the book, isn't it? Kicking the ball out on the full off the kickoff. Yeah, mate, that's unbelievable. I mean, I, I just give praise to the coach. I think he got them out there in the second half. They did everything I think he's asked them to do, kick long and, and get down there. But that defence on Mitch wasn't good enough. And that, you know, it's just created this now. And... I mean, obviously, uh, I think the Panthers, if they're not next to score, it's curtains. The Terriers, can they, can they sniff? They can, they can sniff another try coming, surely. The momentum has definitely gone on the goal gong. He's on the goal gong side now. And we play up. And Matt Stott looks for that inside ball again. Who's that? Kurt Gudgeon running that short line. 
Willie, Willie Barnes is looking for he's looking for the field goal. Twelve points out. We've still got 30, 34 minutes to go. Early option for a field goal, but you get the ball back. I do like the field goal option. This is Nat Stott. He's go pro himself. He goes up to his end. He's supported over again. But get the field goal, Willie Barnes. I'll go for four points. That's a try, and that could be the curtains. Early, Gil Ganja have been stunned. Back-to-back -back tries for the Terriers. This time, Andy Stott, and with a kick to come, the Terriers lead 20 points to four. So the Stott brothers working together. Matt offload the Andy, and Andy, even though he's a pint-sized figure, he's very, very strong, and he used his strength to get over the line, and the, Panth and the Panthers, they're in the huddle... On their own, on their own try line, and Adam Hazelton must be saying, "Come on, guys! They need the, they need the focus, need the regroup. They need, and they need to regroup quickly because this could easily blow out to a big score line if the Terriers can continue this, with this momentum." Twenty points to four. Golgong over Gilganja. Back to back tries. First one to James Morrison, and one just then to Andy St to Andy Stott. And now Andy's older brother Matt looking to slot home the extras to give Golgong an eighteen point buffer, which he does. Seven and a half minutes gone in the second half. It's Golgong leading Gilganja. 22 points to four in the 2015 Benny Go Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final. Now, last time we were here before, the kickoff went off, went out on the full, and they and, Gil, and Golgong scored from that set. This time, it's safely in and brought down, and Kyle Webley runs out half hard, and he's been met by Richie and another Gilganja player. Strong. Big run and oh, huge hit there! Who was that, Hazelton? I think that was that was Kieran Hazelton. Huge over the top hit. Then look at it for Harvey. I think I think whatever Adam Adam Hazelton said it in that little group has worked because Gilganja have just coming up firing now. They're in defence. They're rushing up on the line, meeting the Terriers, not getting the ter the Terriers over the advantage line. And it's quiet. Keeps it to Matt Stott, and Matt Stott realizes the. The danger here is he boots the ball down the field. Unfortunately, Curtis Carr picks it up on the 20-meter line and runs a darting run, but he gets gets tackled. A ball and all tackle. Great tackle there by Mitch Squire. Uh, Kyle Alexander, sorry. And another Alexander again. And he's been helped by Gudgeon. And Blake Gore, the number 19. This is Adam Halderton, who's been, I've got to say, been one of the, the form forwards not just of the competition, but also of today for the for the Panthers. He's definitely leading by example. That's a bit of a high shot there, and it's tackle four, and gu and I think that's Kurt Gudgeon who's who just got above above the sh the chops. Well, I think it was Jamie Towney who was the recipient, of, unfortunately, of that high hit, and referee Mick Dries telling telling Gudgeon to just to keep it down. Well, it's not. We don't want to end up with 12 players on the field, especially in a grand final. That's Richie. Fine to touch. And now they're at, on their 20 metre line, Gil Ganja. This is their first opportunity of, of the second half to really, really have a crack at the Terriers line. Adam and Halderton, a bit slow to play the ball. This is Hammond. Inside ball to Kelly. Anthony Ned Kelly gives out the hammer. Great, great ball. It's Nixon. His best short. Is he over? Oh, he might have been rolled over. He's given it. The Panthers players are like it. Drys likes it. It's a try. Panthers have hit the ball. Hit, hit back through Josh Nixon. Again, something out of nothing. And Nixon, in the process of getting tackled, rolled the ball over. And he scored a try. And just like that, Gilganja hit the board. Hit, have scored the try to get back on the board, and this, that was a desperate try they needed. They needed those points, didn't they, Willie really, Barnes, to stay in this game? Mate, uh, obviously they had to be the next to score, otherwise it would be curtains. Um, however, we go back to it again. It comes down to the error, the lazy arm, the high shot, the penalty, good kick for touch, and a great ball out wide. In they go again. Yes. 
you go back to that high shot, Kurt Gudgeon. And three tackles later, Gil Gantra find themselves scoring on on the western on the western touchline on the grandstand on the grandstand side. If you're familiar with the surroundings of the Billy Dunn Oval, this is Luke Ritchie. Another difficult kick for the halfback. He slides in, and it's not coming around. Unfortunately, he's pushed it too wide. So again, unfortunately, he could not add the points. But with 11 minutes gone into the second half, Golgong Lee 22 points to eight over Gilgandra in the 2015 Bendigo Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final. They said a big crowd here. The sun is still out. There's a bit of a, a bit of a breeze from the southwest, not as strong as it was earlier in the game in the league tag game, which was run, won by Canamble, 19 points to 18, and it's gone out. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Gil Gander have let, the, have let Matt Stott's kickoff bounce and go over the sideline. Another coach killer for the Panthers as the Terriers have the ball, have a scrum feed 15 metres out from, their, from the Gil Gander line. Gil Gander, they've done so well to get back into this game and something as silly as letting the ball go off go out on the side, out on, not on the full, but bouncing it out over the sideline, gives the Terriers a perfect opportunity to score the possibly their fifth try of the game. As Stott, look for the pass, but decides to go himself. He gets wrapped up, 12 metres out. Mitch Squire at half. And he stops calling it from the, on the left. Gives it out to Betts. Big Nathan Martin. He's making, he's him moving. He can't be stopped. He gets, eventually gets brought down by Hammond. Squire, look at O'Connell. Can he get over? He's over the line. He scores! Try time, and that could be it. I don't want to go up too early, but Golgong Terry scored their fifth try, and Gil, this is going to be tough work for the Panthers to come back now. Luke O'Connell, who's been who's been a star for the Terriers for a number of years, gets rewarded with a grand with a try with a meat pie on grand final day. Now the Terriers lead 26 points to eight. 13 minutes gone in the second half with a kick to come, and Willie Barnes again. Errors. Terry, uh, Panthers let the ball off the kickoff go out, and now, as you saw, Terry has scored two tackles later, get a try. Mate, the, the difference between these errors now and the ones that were happening in the first half, I believe, is that the boys were a bit fresher, so they could defend a bit better, but now that the fatigue factor's coming in, as soon as the error happens, the opposition jump, and I mean, you can you, you see it now at, at Telstra Premiership level, it is vital that you complete that set after a try scored, and Gill just, the ball goes out, they don't even get the ball, so, and, you know, to give the opposition the ball 20 metres out, it's, it's suicide. Yes, simple errors are hurting. Well, both sides have been uh, doing similar things, but the simple errors are hurting Gil Ganger a lot more than they are hurting Golgong, I must say. Another try for the Terriers have come off the back, come off the back of a Panthers error. And Luke O'Connell, who, as I said before, has been a, a prized player for, for the Terriers the last couple of seasons, as Matt Stott's conversions just sneaks in the left-hand upright, and he adds the, conver adds the extra two points. And now that... Golgong take their lead from 16 points to now 20. Apologies, from 14 to 20, I should say. Golgong lead 28 points to 8. 14 and a half minutes gone in the second half. The kick from Towney goes deep. Backed up by James Morrison. Weverly, another strong run. He's been he's been one of the form forwards of the day today, Weverly. He and Kurt Gudgeon have played very well. This is Kyle Alexander running the ball up. Has he dropped the ball? Oh, no. Referee drives. His, he's probably telling him to, to take it back. Some of the Gil Gander Panthers are calling for a penalty. Oh, yeah, knock on. The touch judge call. That's Wayne Burgess on the far touch line who singled to his, the man in the middle that in that in the process of playing the ball, Kyle Alexander has knocked the ball on. And maybe, who knows, maybe that error might come back to bite the Terriers on the backside. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Panthers need the score to stay alive in the 2015 Benedict Bank Castle Ray Lee Grand Final. That's a big shot there on Simon Cass. And the shoulder charge. 
Obviously, you can't do that now. And there's a reason why they've, they've outlawed it. They were trying to protect the players. And Simon Cass showing no side effects of that shoulder charge. He gets up and gets tackled again. Panthers, early in the tackle count. 10 metres out. Gives out the Townie. Jamie Townie goes forward and comes back. Then gets strapped up by, by a handful of Terry support ter terror defenders. That's and that's another penalty, and that's Shane Dermott, the, the guilty person in that in that incident all over Jamie Townie. The Panthers, five metres out, right in front. Towney gives out the Richie. Richie goes himself, looking to start, but he gets wrapped up again. Three Terriers defenders. Gil Granjel have to score to keep the keep alive. Their hopes of winning their fourth Castlereagh Ray League Premiership. This is Kieran Hazelton. This is Nixon, a try score early. Hammond decides to go himself. Just short, just brought short down. Two metres, two metres out. Townie gives out the Richie. Richie, long ball. Out to out the car. Curtis Carr's already had one. Given out that AJ Young out there. And this, this is the last tackle. What are they going to do? Gives it out. That's Richie. Kicks it through. Oh, kicked it straight into the Terriers. And play on. Six to go. Panthers give it to Richie. Richie's looking for the try line. He's, no, just brought down. Short forward. Six, six, six tackles to go as the Terriers players play the ball. Dummy half. It's over. Yep. And it's a try. It looks like a try, is it? It's a try. Referee Mick, Mick Drives points to the spot. I've got to say... It kind of, kind of fooled everyone. I think it was, I'm not too sure who was the try scorer. I think it was Jamie Townie who, who might have crossed over from, from dummy half. He's made a bit of a knack of that all season, the hooker. But whoever, I think it was Townie that scored. But whoever it was, it was much needed for the Panthers. As the Terriers lead 28 points to 12, 18 minutes gone. And Willie Barnes, as I said, another error constitutes a try. Yeah, mate. This time it was it was a bit unfortunate, I suppose. The kick went straight to the the Terriers player who's who's knocked it on, and they got the six to go. They only needed two of those, and in un, and you know in under the post, it's a, it's a good try. It's a good hit back. Um, long way to go, mate. I, I don't know if they can get there. And so 22 minutes ago, and these extra two points are vital. Luke Ritchie makes no mistake. Mind you, though, he was close to the goal sticks. As the Terriers now lead 28 points to 14. With 22 minutes left in this of the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final, Willie Barnes just said it would be interesting if they, if if Gil Ganja can complete their set, as he's, as you he alluded to earlier, it's very important to to minimise mistakes, but whether they complete your set after you've scored a scored a try, and this is big Adam Hazelton, who as I said has probably been the the best player for Gil Ganja today. The best forward, at least. He's been running hard. Doesn't take a backward step. And there we go. And that was Brandon Hammond as Willie Barnes is... Well, if you're a coach... Well, <laughs> if you're Brian Brian Irvin, the Gil Ganja coach, well, you may as well start walking back to Gil Ganja because I don't think you want to be watching this game anymore. But the amount of errors that Panthers have copped up, and not just... Not just um, where are they out? They're in their own half. That's the that's the, the staggering stat I find. They've been doing it in the inside their own half. As Stott now, here we go. Andy Stott looking for a run. He gets tackled. Can the Terriers score another try from a Gilgan off the back of a Gilganja error? As Carter gives out the Sam Rawlinson, and it's been called for. So Gilganja being let off the hook. James Carter's ball to Sam Rawlinson, the centre, has been called forward. Touch Judge Brad Size right in line and correctly called by Mick Dries. Like the Panthers have been led off there. Let's just see if they can complete this now, this set of six. <laughs> There's been a lot of, there has been a lot of scrums uh, today. We're halfway, we've got 20 minutes to go. In the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final for 2015. Golden Terriers lead. Gilganja Panthers, 28 points to 14 here in their front of their home crowd at Billy Dunn Oval. Ben Harris and Willie Barnes in commentary for you. 
This is Richie. Big for Simon Cass pushing the pass. Dryan says he's gone backwards. He said play on. Bit fortunate there for Panthers. Oh. And oh, Mitch Squire in the process. Mitch Squire, beautiful effort in the process of tackling Luke Ritchie. He's knocked the ball on. And unfortunately for, for Gilganta, they've knocked, the, they've knocked the ball forward. And it's going to be a scrum on the 30 metre line, on Gilganta's 30 metre line. But unfortunately for the, for the Panthers, they don't have the ball. The Terriers will be on the attack and be looking to add more insult into injury. Matt Stott passes out to Andy Stott. You get out to Brad James. Got to say, Brad James has been pretty quiet this today. Panthers have done very well to keep him to keep him um, under wraps. Here's Brendan Carter inside ball to Sam Rawlinson, and he get he gets tackled. He gets tackled by the number 15, Josh Nixon. In mid squire gives out to Kurt Gudgeon. He's he's been solid. Makes a breakthrough. He gets brought down five meters out from from the Panthers line. They're sniffing out a try on the left-hand side. Stott's calling it. Get, here he comes. It's come to the Andy. Inside ball again to James Carter. He comes back to the Brendan Carter. Brendan Carter comes back inside. Looking, looking for that try line. He's nearly, nearly burrowed his way through the, the, the fence and nearly over the try line. Big Dave, David Munn runs up. Gives it to Andy Stott. This is Matt Stott with the ball. This is Brad James. He steps in. Waves the defenders. Looking for it. He steps through. Can James James get over the pass and through? Great inside ball. Shane Dermott's over. Try time! That's a try in the tournament! And it's. And Bradbury Mick tries to water, and unfortunately we're on! Unfortunately, someone has said cattle dog, and everyone has come on in! Well, bit of a bit of a shirt pulling here, bit of a pushy shove. I gotta say, this has come out of, this has come out of nowhere. All the talk throughout the week from both sides is about how friendly the players are with each other off the field. Obviously, being on the field, playing for a, for a grand final is very different. But it's, it's quite... Tensions are just um, raised at the moment. And Mick Dries is, has quickly got this back under control. He's... He's telling, he's, he's telling the Gilganja Panthers players to just to move away at the moment. He's going to have a chat with his fellow touch judge touch judges I should say Wayne Burgess and the Brad Size but just to reek Shane Dermott did cross over the line and has I think this is Adam the two captains now have been caught out Adam Hazelton from Gilganja Panthers and his opposite opposite uh, number James Carter the captain coach of the Terriers unfortunately we don't have the referees mic'd up we can't. We can't really see what's been happening. I'm sh what, what do you reckon, Willie? What do you reckon Mick would have said in that? In that, uh, to the two captains just then. Uh, mate, I, I dare say, what's probably created is just a fr frustration. We've had a lot of drop ball, a lot of stop start stuff, which the players don't like. Mick would have just been telling both captains, boys, we've had a clean, good, hard, clean game all so far. We've got you know 18 minutes to go. Let's not do anything silly. We don't want someone sitting down. And. Shane Dermott was a try scorer for, for the Terriers. That's their sixth try of the day. Matt Stott looking to add the the extras, which will give Golgong another 20 point cushion. And with 17 minutes left on the on the clock, 20 points in a grand final, with the amount of errors that Gilgendo have been doing, I think it's going to be an uphill battle for the Panthers to get up there. But you never, never, never say never. Don't count them out until the fat lady sings. As Stott adds the extras, 34 points to 14. Terriers over Panthers with 16 and a half minutes to go in the 2015 Bendigo Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final. Ben Harris and Willie Barnes here in the commentary box at a beautiful Billy Dunn Oval. Earlier today we had the Barland, the Barland Darling Cup Under 17 Champions. Burke Warriors taking on the Group 14 under 17 champions, Coonabarabra and Unicorns in a, in a fixture, with Burke winning 32 points to 24. In the lead tag, we had the Coonamal Bears, or Bearettes, I should say, defeating Trangy 19 points to 18 in Golden Point Extra Time. 16 minutes ago in the big game, 
here at Golgong. Terry is leading 34 points to 14. And, and that's Brad James who's lost the ball. So now an opening, an opening for Panthers to get, to reduce that 20-point deficit to at least 16, if not 14, if they can get a, a, a successful ver conversion. But they need the score. You have to, you have to think they have to score on this set to um, to jumpstart their march back into contention. As Richie a dummy half, he gives it out to the number 18. That's Frecklington. He runs up. He's only he's been brought down. They're 12 meters out. The Panthers. They coming out to the left. Richie. That's Nixon. Looking for the car. He's been he's been quiet in the second half, but he might break off the shackles. He's had a, he had a wow the first half, but he's been pretty quiet in the second half. This is Nixon again to Richie. Richie flat ball. They're playing out. The ten meters and Nixon gives it out to Kelly. Kelly's been barging his way through. Can he get over? No, he's just short. Fifth tackle, last tackle for the for the Panthers. What can they do? Richie puts a little grubber in. It's come off for Terrier's leg. Has it been played out? Oh, Terriers have regathered. Don't worry about it. Was it played at? The Terriers have regathered and the Terriers have been let off the hook there. That was Mitch, that was Mitch Squires who who jumped on the ball, and Matt Stock Matt Stock gets the uh, and that's a oh, huge hit there. Dave Morrison not going anywhere. Cole Alexander on the far side. Fourteen, just less than fourteen minutes ago in the grand final, Golgong Lee thirty-four points to fourteen. Matt Stott, he reefs it hard and he deeps a big kick too, and it's gone. It's gone. Morty. Oh, thirty's coming in. Been hit late. No. What's no. Thirty's coming in. It'll be if, if he's taken out late, the penalty will go where the ball's landed. And there it is. And there it is. Right call there from Billy Barnes. Eagle. Had an eye of an eagle there. And great call from Wayne Burgess. He saw the late hit on Matt Stott, who's just been attended now by the trainer. He, 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 he will probably stay on. I don't think Matt Stott will take a lot more of a late hit for Matt Stott to come off the field, especially in the grand final. He's all right. He's just sucking the big ones in. Referee Mick Dries. Points, points to the spot for a penalty. Now Golgong on the on the attack. This big run, huge run. It's a try. Are they over? No, just short. Unbelievable. That's, that's got to be a penalty. It is too. Too early. Marker's leaving too early and a bit of a push and shove. You got You got to say if Terriers do score here, it will definitely be a game set match. I can't see Panthers coming back with only less than 13 minutes to go. There's Morrison and now. Big Nick Harvey for a, for a young player who's played very, very well in, in, in a senior grand final. Squires at dummy half. This is Matt Stott. Looks for a dummy. That's for Brad James. Beautiful shot. That's it. And it's over. And Brad James has scored. And with that, you have to say the grand final will be the grand final premiership trophy will be staying in Golgong for the for the first time. Terry is now lead 38 points to 14 with 12 minutes to go. Great try there by the Terriers and the Gilganja Panthers. It, what could have been for the Panthers, but unfortunately for them, it might look like they were going leaving Golgong empty-handed, which is unfortunate for them because they've done so well the last last few weeks, the last two months, in fact. They haven't lost a game since July. They've been going on a six-game undefeated streak, but incredible, incredible uh, game from Golgong. Unfortunately, it's just been the errors from the Panthers that, that have hurt them too much. As we've... 11 minutes ago, Matt Stotch is taking his time with the conversion. Terry is leading 38 points to 14. As try scorer Shane Dermott, he's coming off the field. Blake Gorey coming on. Captain coach James Carter is coming off the field as well, as is Nick Harvey for, for, the, for the Terriers. A few changes for, for the Panthers. 
As Stott lines up, wind blowing in front of his face. He strikes it off the boot. Looking good, and it's there. And the Terriers have racked up 40 points in the grand final. They lead the Panthers 40 points to 14 with 10 and a half minutes to go in the 2015 Bendigo Bank Castlereagh Ray League grand final. Willie, 10 and, a half minutes, 10 and a half minutes to go. What do you think? Can the Panthers... Well, it's going to be a tough task for them to come back now, isn't it? Oh, I think I think it's um, yeah, it's too tough, eh? unfortunately, for Gil. But um, what I have noticed in this second half, the Stott brothers, with their experience, uh, as soon as the ball gets in the opposition half, they're taking over now. They're making sure the ball control, and it's paying dividends. This is Carl Weverly. Big, big young, big, big rung for him. Look, Kurt Gudgeon, another another strong run for him. He's still going, even though he's got three players on him. He's made at least 15 metres there. As Morrison takes a big run. Good, good tackle. This is the fourth. Gives out Carl Weverly back for another second run. His second hit up of, of, the, of the set. Uh, Matt Stott gets the ball. He goes high. He's going he's gonna to say the, the car... Catch this if you can. Carl lets it bounce, which is dangerous. Carl oh, Alexander's in there. Play on. Is it? Oh, hang on a minute. No, knock on. I did. I did. Thought I saw a bit of a the odd juggle from James Morrison, but Curtis Carl, I'm not sure what you what he was doing, leading the ball bounce, the bounce of the ball going into Golgong's favour, and that was Carl Alexander who the desperation attempt of throwing the ball back inside, and unfortunately. Uh, Unfortunately for the Terriers, James Morrison picked up the ball, but unfortunately in his, in his process of putting the ball over the line, just dropped it. So that could have been another try for the Terriers. But nevertheless, off the hook for the Panthers. Credit there, mate. Credit there goes to the uh, referee and, and the touchy who were up there for that and got the call right. As is Richie, he's been brought down. 35 minutes, 35 minutes from their own line. AJ Young plays the ball on the 40 metres. Hammond kicks it, looks for his inside the 40 20. He's looking for a 40 20, but Carter's back there and, and cuts it off. And he's running hard across field. Palms off one defender. Still going. That's the second defender. Good little run there by Carter. Just doing an, an unfortunate. Uh, well, all that, all that, all that hard work. And the Panthers, a bit over aggressive in their uh, defence. Shove Carter back, but referee Mick Dries allows the allows Carter to play the ball back, play the ball where you got where you, hurt, where you got hurled. Is that Matt Stott in, in dummy half? Is big Nathan Martin. He makes he makes some final meters. We've got seven and a half minutes to go. Golgong Terriers lead forty points to fourteen in the in the twenty fifteen Bendigo Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final. Matt Stott shimmies for a kick, gets a rave from Richie, then he kicks it. Ken La Carl lets it bounce again, and it's gone out on the sideline, has it? It has. And we'll pack it down for a scrum. A few of the Gilganja Panthers, a lot of tired legs out there, a lot of stop starts. But the Terriers, they are seven minutes away from uh, winning their maiden Castlereagh League Premiership. As it their last, their last premiership for the Terriers was back in 2007 when they were playing in the Midwest Cup competition, which is now known as the New Era Cup. They won that in 2007. So it's been it's been an eight-year wait for the Terriers to to get the premi to get a toll again. Beautiful ball by Kieran Hazelton. I'm pretty sure that's that's Hammond who's on the speed. He's got a burst of speed, but gets brought down. Great tackle. That's Sam Rawlinson who did the tackle. This is number, this is number five, Harry Irvin. He came a little dart, and he's been brought down, brought down by number twelve, Luke, o, Luke O'Connell. Squires at marker. Hammond, Richie, Adam Hazelton. It's a long ball. It's been called play on, and it's number fifteen. That's Nixon. He's gone away. Well, some some of the crowd members were, were asking for a forward pass, but the referee said play on. But there's the penalty. Bit of bit of bit of a frustration clipping in from Terriers. 
And referee drives, calls time out. And I think that's Brad James down again. And with six minutes to go, the Terriers lead 40 points to 14. Six minutes away from winning, from claiming the first Castlereagh League Premiership. The Panthers, they can be proud of their efforts. Finishing third, beating Coonabarabran and Coonamble, the minor premiers, along the way to the grand final. They've done, they've done very well to get to get here. As Ke uh, Hazleton, Kieran Hazleton, well, I've got to say, the pass wasn't that crash shot from, from Hammond. Kieran Hazleton had to jump pretty high to get it, and it was still above his head. And he's a, t he's a tall fella, Kieran is. And he still had to jump to reach that, and unfortunately, in the in reaching in reaching it, he's knocked the ball on, and that's kind of been Gilgandra's day, hasn't it, uh, Willie? Just too many errors at the wrong times, hasn't it? Yeah, mate, it's, and it's been constant throughout the whole game. Um, yeah, unfortunately for Gil, they've tried really hard, mate, but just uh, you can't keep turning the ball over. And, ju and, and, just <laughs> and just like that, <laughs> well, Golgon have counted the fumbles. Oh, is there a bit of tension again? It's, it's stopped, boys. And the, and, the, and the teams have come together again. And unfortunately, we don't want to see this at a grand final, especially, especially with five minutes to go. Frustrations have been creeping. I know it's been with a lot of errors. And, and I know, frustrate, I know team players can get frustrated with that, but we don't want to see this. It has been a, it has been a good game. The crowd on that far side voicing their opinion. I'm not I'm not in, I'm I'm not entirely too sure how that how that happened. Obviously Golgong knocked the ball on. And I guess one of the Panthers players probably gave gave one of the Terriers players a bit of a pat on the head and saying thanks very much. We'll take we'll take that ball. And that's brought the two uh, the two teams together for the second time in about five minutes. As we'll wait and see what Mick Dries is going to do. He's having a chat with his touch judges again. It would be a real shame, Willie, as you alluded to earlier, it would be a real shame if someone had was, was given a sim bin with only five minutes to go. It would be a real shame towards the end of the game, wouldn't it? Oh, it would be, mate. Um I didn't see any punches there. I don't know if there was or not, but we're about to find out because I dare say if there was, uh, somebody will be sitting here for at least 10 minutes. Well, Matt Stott, Matt Stott's been caught out. I'm guessing, well, James Carter's on the bench, so I am guessing Stott's the vice captain. And unfortunately, it's his younger brother, Andy, and there you go, Andy Stott's been given 10 minutes. So Andy Stott's been given 10 minutes in the bin with, with only five minutes to go, so he'll have no further part in this match. He might, if he was smart, he might have a, an early shower. So I'll say another one will go here, mate. Yeah. As we've got Luke Ritchie and Adam Hazleton. Well, Adam Hazleton's been caught out. And I think that's Luke Ritchie's been put in the bin. Yep. So both teams have lost their heart, have lost a, half of their halves pairing. Andy Stott, the 5'8 from Terry, is given 10 minutes. And for his part... Gilganja halfback Luke Ritchie has also been given 10 minutes. So no teams have got a one-player advantage. Both teams have got down the 12 men, and they'll finish with 12 men for the remaining of the, for the, remaining of the game. As Gilganja get the penalty, they're five metres out. Jamie Townley takes it back 10. And it's a, this is at the Josh Nixon. Can Kilgand can Kilgandra get the points on the board? They look over the try. There's over the try. Is there a try there? They're celebrating. I think that's number no. Kilgandra is celebrating. Referees are no knock on. Wayne Burgess and, and Mick Dries. They the referee and the Tinnies touch judge talk together and it's been awarded that I think it was number 18 for for the Panthers. Matt Frecklington. We're pretty, we're a bit far away, unfortunately. It was on the far side of the, of the, on the other side of the field, and I think it was Frecklington who, who had the ball over the line, but somehow lost it. He must, uh, mate, he, he's ruled a scrum, so he, he's obviously lost it prior to getting to the line. Otherwise, it'd be a 20-meter optional. 
So Fremington has lost the ball. So Gelgong have got the ball. Have got the ball. We've got less than four minutes. Less than four minutes before the the, the town so, the, the town of Golgong celebrate a premiership, their first premiership in eight years. And they've coughed the ball up. That's Nathan Martin who's coughed the ball up in a gotta say a big tackle. And that's and that's a huge and that's was that Jamie Towney. He's kind of I'm not sure who the Terrier player was. Could have been Matt Stott, unfortunately. Could have been Matt Stott, I think, but but some, but the fact is the Terriers player was picked up and put on his backside, and I think it's going to be a penalty. There is going to be a penalty to the Terriers for a dangerous tackle. Kieran Hazelton not happy about it. His brother Adams just uh, asking what the career was. Mick Dries is giving him the reason. It's just for a dangerous tackle. As Matt Stock gets a kick and it's on the and they had a restart on the 40 meter line, Gudgeon taps it, gives it. Weverly makes a decoy runner, gives it out to Martin. Can Martin hold on to the ball? Last time he makes a big run and well, he's made up. He made up for that lost that lost ball earlier on for a big run, a big 15 meter gain there by Martin. And this is Brad James. He plays the ball, gives it out. That's that's Gudgeon and dummy half. Weverly, he's been very strong. Running hard. 35 metres out from the Panthers line. Two and a half minutes to go. Terriers lead the Panthers 40 points to 14. O'Connell has a bit of a jump, have a bit of a juggle, but he regathers. Gudgeon to Stott. Stott passes inside. This is Blake Gorry. And again, he picked up and, and put down. Last tackle. Can the Terriers, what are they going to do? Stott goes to the air, goes to cross field kick. James is underneath it. And a great take by Curtis Carter. He's running away. Shut the gate. This could be a great Carter's away. Great cover the fence by Weverly. He's put the ball. Oh, unfortunately, we've caught play on. Off wheels a knock on, but we drives is called knocked on. Play on. A Gilganja player is down. Not sure who it was. It's Rory Milgate who's down in the back play, but Panthers have got the ball. Play on. This is number, ni number 19, Nick Weir, and a penalty. Well, bit of a... <laughs> bit of a... Yeah, hectic. I've got to... I was just going to say, it was quite a, out of nothing. I thought, I thought Curtis Carr was away, but unfortunately, the cover of the fence, especially from Carl Weverly, a big prop, he, he mowed him down very, very easily. And his car straight through the gap. He's looking for his second. Can Carr get over his pass and inside? And again, unfortunately, the last pass has gone wayward, and it's been picked up by Nathan Martin from the Terriers. And with a minute to go, that will probably be the last opportunity for Panthers for a try scoring opportunity as Terriers will run down the clock. Got to give credit to Curtis Carr. He's, he's, tried, he's tried to do something, but unfortunately, that last pass, not finding, his, not finding a Gilgandra teammate in the arms of, of Nathan Martin, the prop forward for Golgong Terriers. It's James Morrison. He takes up the hit up. Brad James will go from hit up from Damien Half. This is, what the, this is what the Terriers will do. He looks for, the, looks for a gap. With 50, with, 50 seconds, with 50 seconds remaining, last tackle for the Terriers. This is the last opportunity. Stotch just drills it down. He'll be, he'll be looking for a, for a sideline, and he's kicked it out on the full. Well, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Gilganja, will Gilganja want to play? Gilganja will have one last crack, but unfortunately, it will be all too late. Golgong Terriers will run out winners. They currently lead 40 points to 14 with less than 30 seconds to go. When the full-time siren happens, the, the Terriers faithful, the town of Golgong will be celebrating a new premiership, their first premiership. This is Chris Fuller, and that's full-time. And that's full time in the 2015 Bendigo Bank Castlereagh League Grand Final. The Golgong Terriers are the champions. They defeated Gilganja Panthers 40 points to 14 in the Grand Final. The Terriers' first Castlereagh League Premiership since joining the competition in 2009. It's their first Premiership to, since 2007. And it's quite a great effort from for James Carter and his team. They put so much effort into it. 
So Terry is leading 40 points. Terry is winning 40 points to 14. And Willie Barnes, a final synopsis from you. How did you see? How did you see the game? Obviously, the errors cost Panthers, but obviously Terry has they've been fantastic all season and worthy winners. Oh, mate, definitely today. Um, the errors certainly cost uh, Gill. Um, I think both sides early on made a lot of errors, but but uh, obviously the Terriers took more advantage of the errors and, and got on top. And, mate, really, it, it was probably towards the end of that first half, I don't think they looked like getting pegged. Um, mate, there were some good players out there. Though. Curtis Carr for the Panthers was fantastic, I thought, all day. Both halves played well. Um, Adam Hazelton, I mean, my goodness, if you're looking for an inspirational leader, I mean, he didn't stop the whole game, and he was backed up well by his brother. Um, for the Terriers, mate, Brad James at fullback was good. I thought Card, uh, Carter did some good stuff off the wing. Cole Alexander, when needed, was, was jumped in and, um, and made some good shots in defence. Second rower, uh, Gugden, for me, was outstanding. And I also thought um, Mitch Squires did some good stuff at different times. Andy and, and Matthew Scott, obviously, as that second half started to come into it, they came into their own with the experience and led the boys home. It's a, it's a very, very uh, well-deserved victory. You can see the Golgon Terriers, how much this means to them. Obviously, this is their first Castle Ray League uh, Premiership. Well, what would it mean for the whole town of Golgon, do you think, that they've won uh, their first title? Well, mate, I've been lucky enough to play in a, in a winning premiership in a small town. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what it does. Even for today, the amount of people that are here that would stop at the local shops and buy something, it, it boosts everything. But for the, for the morale of the town, I'd say it'll be a big, big night in Golgong, and probably an early morning, I would suggest. Um, and that, they'll enjoy every bit of it, and so they should, mate. Good luck to them. As we talk, uh, talked about earlier today, uh, earlier in the coverage about the friendship and relationship between these two, as we've just seen there, both teams clapping e each other off. You don't see that often in, in rugby league, but with the uh, respect and admiration that both sets of players and clubs have for each other, um, it's great. It's great. To, it's great to see that sort of sportsmanship happening. Even even though towards the end there was a bit of a uh, push and shoving, two players with sin bin, uh, one one each from each side, but. Despite what's happened on the field, off the field, both clubs have said, all right, the better team has won and now we can celebrate the season. Yeah, mate, and that's the way it should be. Once that hooter goes, it's over. We need to forget what happened out there. I mean, we had a game that was stop-start affair. Obviously, you know, we get a bit heated out there and, and sometimes in the heat of the battle, these things happen. There was, I didn't see any punches thrown. If there were, there were one or two, which is very good from both clubs. We're just repeating here, it's full time in the... 2015 Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final. The Golgong Terriers victorious for the first time since joining the competition in 2009. They defeated Gilganja Panthers 40 points to 14 in the Grand Final. Willie Barnes, thank you very much for helping me in commentary. I'm Ben, I'm ben Harris. Thank you very much for, for joining us on the coverage and we'll see you next time next year in the Bendigo Bank Castle Ray League Grand Final. From all of us at Billy Darnoval, it's goodbye.
and when they finish this party. Thanks for having me. Thanks for putting up with me again. Um, once again, putting me down there and going to be in this hot night. No green lights, no green buildings, but uh, I'm in the past, there we are, if you imagine. Congratulations to Dogon, and on behalf of the Dogon, we are here to the Bendigo team. We've been proud to be associated with uh, Parkway Aviation School, and uh, all thank you for being the first and very first of all. Thank you. 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 